Hey guys, welcome to Into Fly Fishing, and my name is Pierre Rivera. Today we're going to have a look at 10 of our favorite bonefish flies. Well, before we get to our favorite flies, let's first talk about what makes a bonefish fly great. Obviously, there are hundreds and thousands of different fly patterns on the market or that have been developed by very capable and, and talented fly tires. Everybody's saying their fly is the best or unique in some sort of way, and they are. But to a certain extent, most flies have been developed from a base, couple of base patterns. So what makes a bonefish fly great? Obviously, that question will provoke various different answers from different guides and different anglers who've traveled to different destinations. All bonefish do have the basic same sort of habits, but every fish um, in a certain destination will have its favorite food source. So what makes a bonefish fly great depends on two things in my opinion. It's consistency and the ease of fly tying. So consistency. The consistency of a bonefish fly depends on how consistently it is able to produce fish across various different destinations. For instance, a gummy minnow, in my opinion, is a very good um, bonefish fly in certain parts of the Bahamas, but in the Seychelles it doesn't necessarily work that good. Um, for instance, when I was guiding on St. Francois Atoll, we saw many bonefish feeding on small bait fish just under the surface. So we, as guides, played around and we came up with a small bait fish imitation that sure, it did catch a couple of fish and it was really uh, a great achievement for us. However, um, it didn't do so very consistently. If you then swap over to something like a pillow talk, which I'll show you guys later, then you'll see what a true consistent fly is. For instance, a Christmas Island Special, that is an incredibly consistent fly across various destinations. So consistency talks more about how regularly and with ease the fly is able to produce fish in various destinations. The second factor in my opinion that influences uh, how great a bonefish fly is, is how easy it is to tie. Does the fly use many different specialized materials? And how quick is the fly to tie? A good fly in my opinion is a fly that uses minimal specialized material and can be whipped off the vise in less than five minutes. So now that we've talked about what in my opinion um, is what makes a bonefish fly great or not, let's go to the vise and show you each fly on our list. First fly on my list is called the Pillow Talk and here it is in the vise and what it is is basically a um, crazy Charlie variation tied in the same style with a pearlescent underbody, just standard dumbbell um, eyes. You can use tungsten eyes for a heavier fly, you can even use smaller dumbbells for a lighter fly. And the three key ingredients is a white and a chartreuse calf tail, a little bit of flesh, not too much, and then the red nose, which is made from either a red fluorescent red thread, as in this case, or a red flasher boot wrapped around the nose and then sealed with a UV resin. This fly is incredibly versatile um, and effective in the Seychelles. I've seen it catch um, an angler more than 50 bonefish on a day. This fly has also produced a couple of permit, Indo-Pacific permit, and it also works well on uh, milkfish if you're targeting your, them on the flesh, on the flat, um, as the chartreuse overwing has that sort of color of um, the, the algae that the milkfish feed on. So if you're heading to the Seychelles, this is a must-have fly pattern, and I would generally take it in this size. This is a size four. I would take it in size two and a size six, so one size up one size down and in various weights. You can really, if you're heading out to the Seychelles to do some bone fishing, take a box just filled with various sizes and weights of the pillow talk. The second fly um, here in the vise is called James's Sand Prawn. And this is, um, this fly is developed by James Christmas, who is a veteran fly guard from um, Alphonse Fishing Company in the Seychelles. So what it basically is, is a very versatile bonefish fly um, that represents a shrimp, small shrimp found on the sand flats, on many sand flats of the world. So you can tie it in a little white color like this or move into the sort of sand and tan colors. It can even go and um, 
tie them on in grey colours or or even olive if you're fishing on turtle grass. So one of the things that I love about this fly is that the material here um, basically becomes translucent, which reveals a little bit of a red underbody that you tie in. Another very um, effective part of the fly that, and that made it so revolutionary was this double keel system where the tungsten beads um, give way to the fly and the two um, keels basically force the fly to sit straight up um, when you fish it and it also represents a little bit of um, a um, egg sac which the um, little crustacean is carrying around. It's a very effective fly for bonefish as well as permit. Um, it has produced a couple of, a couple of Indo-Pacific permit in the Seychelles and it's truly uh, a very unique and uh, great fly to use. I've also used it on triggerfish and it works especially well. Um, on, on triggerfish, especially in places like Sudan, I would recommend using a little bit more of a muddled colour, so not, not necessarily these bright reds and pinks and oranges, rather go to something um, like dark black beads or something like that, a little bit toned down. So this is the second fly on my list, James's sand pool. For the third fly, um, one of my favourite flies that are, that's something a little bit different is called the Green Machine. Um, there's actually many flies that's called the Green Machine, but this is the Green Machine that's based on a Crazy Charlie. So what it is, is basically um, just a green flashaboo underbody uh, with a little bit of very green calf tail and green flash on the sides. Everything's basically green and, and this fly works very effective when fish um, start um, um, refusing normal or your standard bonefish flies. I like using this. Um, I also like putting this on a client or my, my own fly rod when there are many milkfish um, cruising the flesh. Um, this means that you can, with the same rod with your nine weight, which, which is able to catch bonefish and milkfish, use this fly and um, make shots at bonefish, catch them, and as soon as you see a nice pot of, of milkfish coming through, present this green fly, and very often you'll get to eat. Um, it also works well on other um, algae eating fish, such as batfish. Um, so this is, this is number three three on, on, on my list and I truly um, I like this fly and I always keep a couple of them in my box. So for number four on my list, um, this is one of my favorite all-time saltwater flies. It's called the Taylor's Delight. So what I like about the Taylor's Delight is that it is once again based on a crazy Charlie. It's got a little bit of flesh in the, in the body. Um, depending on the spookiness of the fish, um, I would use the flesh and if the fish are super spooky, I would just leave that all together and just tie a little thread body. The two main um, key ingredients that makes this fly very successful is the rabbit zonker wing. So a rabbit zonker, um, as soon as it gets wet, it just moves beautifully in the water. So this makes this fly so effective for especially spooky and skinny water bonefish, is that you're able to deliver the fly and then just get it in position to intercept the fish and leave it. So the fish will actually come over it and the zonker strip will move a little bit. Just looks like a natural um, little shrimp that's hiding away from it. And what you're basically doing is you're allowing the fish to discover the, the shrimp by, by himself, doing what they should do. So um, this works especially well on skinny water and um, spooky bone fish, as I said. Um, the other um, ingredient that makes the fly very effective is the inclusion of the two rubber legs, which also just gives it a little bit more movement. So this fly, you'll always find it in my box in sizes ranging from 8, which is very small, so that, that I'll use on really, very spooky bonefish with 10 pound tippet, really something light, and you'll find it all the way up to about a size 2 in my box. So those, those flies are generally won't fish for bonefish, those Taylor's Delight um, flies will work very good on triggerfish. Um, so that's number four on my list, the Taylor's Delight. Number five on my list is the Gotcha. The gotcha is truly one of the most effective um, and versatile bonefish flies across the globe. You'll find it in the fly box of every angler and every guide, um, as I said, across the globe, and with good reason. 
It's just the basic profile and the materials are selected in such a way that it just gives the perfect shrimp imitation. It's also very durable with the underbody made from um, like a little little um, body braid material and the overwing is made from craft fur in this case which makes it very durable. This is one of my favorite bonefish flies and is one of those flies that you can put on and fish the same fly for the whole day. So number six on my list is called the spawning shrimp. The spawning shrimp can be tied in various different colors using a couple of different materials and here um, I've gone for a, a egg sack which is made from an orange zonka strip tied in there at the back and the overwing is made from sculpting fiber. What I like about sculpting fiber is it looks kind of fuzzy and buggy now but as soon as it gets wet it turns a sort of translucent color sort of like a gelatinous color that I really like. It's also got these um, rubber legs at the back that just gives the fly some nice movement. You can also use various weights on the fly um, depending on the sink rate you want or uh, how deep the water is or how fast the water is flowing. Um, this fly works especially well on bonefish um, that generally feed on larger um, shrimp um, and it also works well on triggerfish. It's truly one of my favorite bonefish flies um, and it really works very effectively. The next fly on my list is probably one of the most popular um, permit flies of all time. This fly is called the Avalon Shrimp and it looks very buggy and confusing right now but let me take you through the construction first. So what it is, it, it's, uh, it's got a little egg sac here um, that, is, that I've tied using um, some, some red um, or shrimp colored um, zonker strip. It's got a couple of legs and antennae at the back uh, made from black crystal flash. And then the two main components that give this fly its uniqueness is the um, zonker strips that are tied to open, um, to open up like that. And what that does is as soon as the fly um, is stripped, it folds the zonker strips back and when you stop it, the zonker comes open again. So it really gives um, the illusion of claws, um, but it, yeah, it's just such a buggy looking fly, especially in, in the water, and it has immense and incredible movement. The second thing that makes this fly so um, very unique and um, effective is the keel system. So on this keel, I've used some um, fluorescent orange um, tungsten beads, so that gives the fly extra weight. So additional to the tungsten um, bead chain eyes that I've used there, or dumbbell eyes. But it also forces the fly to sit up straight like that as you strip it. So that means first you get fouled um, less in turtle grass, and also the hook points up, and as soon as that permit or bonefish eats the fly, you're gonna get a nice penetration in the top of, um, of, of their jaws. So that's what makes this fly so great for bonefish, I will generally fish a size smaller than this, this fly, I've, I've tied um, for, specifically for permit, this is on the smaller scale for permit, but um, on bonefish I'll tie it in a size 6 or, or a size 4 and um, it's generally meant for bonefish that, that feed on much larger um, um, shrimp species. Um, it's, not, it's, not a, it's not a very small subtle fly, it's very intrusive and very big and it really makes a big plonk when it falls down. Um, it's, it's one of those flies that's very, very um, versatile to ha have rigged on your rod um, where you don't know if you're going to come across a permit, um, a bonefish or even a triggerfish. I've, I've caught many um, of my own personal triggerfish with this fly. So um, yes, that is the Avalon Shrimp, one of the most popular and versatile permit and bonefish flies of all time. So for number 8 on my list, I've got the Viverica uh, Mantis Shrimp. So this is very good if you're looking for a much larger bonefish fly. You can see that the profile is very long. Although it's not that heavy to cast, it's not a big um, fly. You can still fish it with an 8 weight or a 7, with eight or seven weight with ease. It's not a heavy fly. It just has a long profile. So the construction um, is craft fur here at the back. It makes this long sort of snout um, of the shrimp. Um, which is very durable, but it also gives um, the fly a lot of movement, especially that it's so long. The, then you have eyes, that's just made from fluorocarbon or monofilament, um, 
And the biggest thing, in my opinion, that gives this fly its effectiveness is the buggy body. In this case, I just used some of the excess uh, crawfer and just dubbed it very buggy and combed it out with a, with a, um, with a piece of Velcro. But these legs, these long legs just give the fly such great movement. So when you strip it, they fold back and as soon as you stop, they just splay open and yeah, it just give the, gives the fly incredible movement. The big um, profile that it has means that it can attract fish from very far away. Um, I loved using this fly um, in the surf, in the Seychelles, um, where I don't know what I'll, I'm, I'm going to come across. So either you, you'll fish for trigger fish with the same rod. You know, don't have time when big bluefin trevally come in, and this fly really produces well on big bluefin trevally. And then in the surf, you always find big um, single or double um, cruising bonefish that just come in, in and out of the waves. And this fly works especially well in those um, in those environments. In this case, it's tied very light, just using two little bead chain eyes, but you can tie it um, in, in various weights, and it just works so effectively um, on, 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 on general, as a general saltwater um, species fly. Always have a couple of these in your box. You never know when you'll need them. Number nine on my list is called the bonefish bitters. I would generally tie it in size six and size eight, very small, because I use this fly um, only in a very specific scenario. Um, I tied this one specifically for this video so that you can just see um, the details of the fly a little bit better just to get an idea of how it looks and you know all the all the little details on the fly. So before we go to onto how you use the fly or how I um, always use the fly, um, let's just go through the construction first. Um, so what makes it very effective is a couple of very key um, considerations that, that the, the, the fly tire, um, we developed the fly that he took. So um, the first is the rubber legs that is tied in and splayed out very aggressively. So um, what that does is it just gives the fly a lot of movement as you strip it, um, but it also balances the fly. So as you cast it, the fly doesn't flop around, it just balances well as it um, comes dropping through the water column. Then um, this deer hair or elk hair little patch um, sort of gives the fly a little bit of bulk uh, which is the body of the fly but it also acts as a very subtle um, weed guard which I like. Um, also the bead chain eyes I've colored here and you use a lot of epoxy on the bead chain eyes just to form the basis of the, the, the fly's body. Um, the bead chain eyes on the sizes that I tie, size 6 and size 8, I keep very small and this is where I use the fly the most um, or that influences where I use the fly the most um, and that is to quite um, skittish bonefish um, on turtle grass. I love this fly tied in olive and this sort of root beer orange color um, on turtle grass. Um, the lay rubber legs and the um, natural built-in weed guard of the deer hair um, just allow the, the fly to drop down and sit right on top of the turtle grass without falling into it and getting stuck. So what happens is I cast this fly out if I see a couple of bonefish cruising in on the turtle grass flat and I plan on where I'm going to intercept them. I then cast the fly out and I strip it to, to intercept them and then I just leave it. So it sits right on the turtle grass and as soon as the bonefish come a little bit closer I might give it a twitch or two. But what you want to do is allow the fish to do what it does best. Find the fly or find the shrimp and eat it. So all that you have to do is just stay in contact and as soon as you see the fish's gills flare or his pectoral fins come out a little bit just give one firm um, strip set and very often you'll, you'll be into a nice bonefish. So that's the bonefish bitters, very effective um, fly and it's a very unique looking fly and and with all the built-in features it is a very unique fly um, in the sense of where you can use it. So for number 10 on my list which is not necessarily my most favorite or least favorite fly um, is the Alflexo crab. You'll notice that it has gained um, much popularity um, across the globe especially as a permit fly 
um, and a trigger fish fly. It's very effective as a trigger fish fly. But tied and fished correctly to specific bonefish, it produces very consistently, especially larger bonefish who aren't feeding on sand flats. Very often you'll come across a bonefish group that are feeding on broken up coral or coral flats or what we call in Seychelles finger flats. And in these scenarios you want something um, different from a standard um, shrimp like a, like, a, um, like a gotcha or something like that. And this is where the Alflexo crab produces very well. Um, I've caught some of my biggest bonefish using Alflexo crab because they just feed on crabs when they when they tend to be a little bit bigger. So um, what the fly basically is, is a, is a little bit of a what they call our flexo, our flexo tubing, which is basically used in the electrical field to run um, wires through it. And you tie it on and just press it open to, to, to form the body. And then um, the fly can be weighted in different ways. Here I have two tungsten dumbbells tied to the bottom of the hook to force the hook to ride um, hook points up. And then you just finish it up by gluing in some red or whatever color eyes and some chenille, chenille body. This is a very small Alflexo crab, perfect for picky permit and bonefish. This is about the size I would fish for bonefish. So that's it, that's number 10 on my list, the Alflexo crab. I hope that you guys enjoy the video on the 10 best bonefish flies. And if you did, Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications. Then you'll be notified as soon as we release any new videos or content. The link to the full article can be found below the video where we go um, into the bonefish flies a little bit more in depth, describing which scenarios you can use them and what they actually imitate. Please leave any comments, questions or suggestions below the video and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Until we see each other again, cheers.